This chef totally blew Ramsey's mind. Like, how many times have you seen the guy clean his plate? Yep, we're talking about the historic moment that Ramsey actually walked back to the kitchen with an empty plate for the first time ever. Um, thank you. And you've gotta meet the person behind it. Yeah, we're talking about none other than Sharita Jones. Gosh, I love that lady. If you're not in the loop, well, I'm gonna fix that right here and now. When Ramsey paid a visit to Mama Sherry's Soul Food Shack in Brighton, England, he had no idea what was in store for him. They were all about American soul food, and the place was owned and operated by the woman of the hour. The place had been up and running for about three and a half years, could fit around 40 folks, but was struggling hard on those slow midweek days. Mama Sherry herself was putting in work 24 seven, but the sad truth was, all of that hard work couldn't erase the 65,000 pounds of debt they were in. And to rub salt in the wounds, they hadn't made a single dime since day one. Or well, pence, I guess. We've put so much of our own money in it and own it, we no longer have it. Sharita figured that she had tops, three to six months left before things would go belly up. I'm not gonna lose my business. But Ramsey wasn't about to let that happen. Dude was impressed by the restaurant from the jump, thinking it was the cutest thing ever. It was like he was walking straight into her living room or something. This Welcome. is small and quaint. Welcome. It's quaint, it's cozy. So he found his way into the kitchen where he sat down with Brian Moyo, the supposed head chef. I was employed to come as a head chef, right. but because of uh, problems with financing. Uh -huh. But Brian made it clear that he used to run the kitchen full time, but money trouble forced him to cut down his hours. After tackling that, Ramsey wanted to know who the mastermind behind the menu was. Well, it was none other than Sharita herself. Which I mean, I know, we've seen a lot of crazy owners design their own menus before to disastrous effect. But stick with me here. With that, Ramsey strapped in for the most exciting part of the mission, to taste the food. He kicks things off with a catfish goujon starter, served with hush puppies and pineapple salsa. And believe it or not, he actually called it nice and light. It might sound pretty challenging to find good food in a restaurant that's on the decline, right? Well, just look at Ramsey's reaction. It's actually quite nice. Very, um, very delicate fish. He was absolutely impressed with how well it was cooked. A fan of the show pointed out that just the fact that Ramsey enjoyed the food should be enough to attract more people to give it a try. Like, talk about a vote of confidence. And the fact that he didn't spit it out straight away, well, that's gotta be a first. Most of the time, we blame the chef for the failure of their restaurant. But considering Ramsey seemed to enjoy the food here, you must be wondering what could have possibly gone wrong. Well, I'll come back to that a little later. For now, the main event. Ramsey took the plunge into a mishmash of soul food goodness, a combo of ribs, jambalaya, corn, and succotash. And brace yourself, folks, because he actually said this. This may be the first time I actually go back to the kitchen with an empty plate. Yeah, you heard that right. He actually cleaned his plate. Then, with all the dramatic flair you could expect from the guy, he strolled right into the kitchen with his plate polished clean. Thank you. Bloody delicious. And what do you think happened next? Ramsey told Sharita that her food was just absolutely delightful. And those spices? You know what? Thank you. I thought it was going to be really spicy, but no, it turned no, down no. and it was spot on. Oh, right on the money. He even said it took him back home, back to his roots of good old homestyle cooking. Getting compared to Ramsey's own mother? You couldn't ask for higher praise. And of course, Sharita was over the moon herself. Uh, and having uh, some home cooking. Uh, it was very good. Uh, don't get me crying. The, 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 the. She was on the verge of tears, and not the tears that we'd usually expect from the show, but tears of joy. Clearly, she was overwhelmed by Ramsey's compliments. Meanwhile, a viewer was totally blown away. Like, everybody was happy, and they were having an action human conversation without shouting or ignoring each other? Somebody pinch me, I must be dreaming. Yeah, 100% on the money there, I'm tired. Gotta be the most feel-good episode of the show, hands down. Another viewer was like, if Ramsey likes your food, you're a freaking top chef. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And everyone with that sort of talent deserves the best. 
Absolutely. And boy was Ramsey thinking the same thing. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Now, when it comes down to it, the taste and flavor of the food are the real stars in a restaurant, and Sharita for sure had the skills to do that. It's a testament to her passion and talent that she was able to create such delicious food that people couldn't help but love, especially Ramsay. But the question now is, what exactly was causing the restaurant to fail even though it had such great food? The next day, Ramsey showed back up at the restaurant, and guess who he found hustling in the kitchen? And Sharita's tackling most of the day's preparation single-handedly. Yeah, Sharita herself. Well, that's what good owners do. They don't run away from their responsibilities, even though they might be short-staffed. Instead, they stand their ground and face the day's challenges head-on. God, if only all the other restaurant owners who've been paraded out on the show over the years had half of her work ethic, Ramsey'd be out of a job for sure. Coming back, Sharita was quick to say that she was responsible for doing the prep work before service, and had to do it all on her own too, just to save a few bucks. But here's the kicker. Where do you think most of the food she cooked landed? Most of it's coming from the freezer, rather than the salt. It went straight into the freezer, only to be zapped back to life and served up piece by piece. While they continued to chat, Sharita didn't slow her roll, getting a tray of chicken wings prepped up all the while. Marinating meat, making dressings, sauces, and bacon. But guess what? Those bad boys won't even hit a plate for another eight hours. Talk about planning ahead, huh? So this was one of their main issues. Sharita was in the business of cooking up a storm, only to freeze it all away and defrost it when it was showtime. Oh, and guess how many freezers they were rocking? A grand total of 13. Well, at least they were getting their money's worth out of them. Sharita also had some company in the kitchen. Brian, the part-timer, who would often roll in. But here's a little bit more about that. In a sense, you're not actually really cooking, you're just coming in and putting things together. Putting things together, yes. Yep, most of the prep would have already been tackled by none other than Sharita herself. Now, let's talk about the rest of the crew. These part-timers, well, they unfortunately didn't have Sharita's work ethic. Not an ounce of it. Lauren strolled in casually late by about 10 minutes, AD barged in straight from his garage gig, and Gavin? Well, he practically lived next door, but only showed up whenever he felt like it. Yeah, that's definitely not helping things. But he appears to turn up when he feels like it. Sharita's got this whole nurturing vibe going on with them, treating them like her own children. And when they roll in late, well, let's just say she wasn't exactly cracking the whip. Discipline wasn't exactly her style. I'm seeing some great motherly energy here, but not business owner energy. And her employees saw it too, since they just took her for a ride. Sharita's husband, Phil. After his day gig as a librarian, he switched gears to play bartender in the evenings. After witnessing all this, Ramsey was left speechless, but at least there was some entertainment for him. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> Ramsey took a front row seat during an evening service, and what did he witness? The chefs? It's just an elaborate heating and plating up exercise. Mountains of messy food, school dinner style. Well, they were in the process of reheating and getting plates ready, all from the stash that Sharita had cooked up earlier. Meanwhile, Sharita was still powering through. She was basically running the show solo, from whipping up dishes to getting them onto plates and even dashing to the front of the house to serve. Talk about a one-woman show. Now, here's the kicker. Ramsey took a closer look at Brian, one of the chefs. He's got this ultra laid back vibe, and Ramsey had a challenge for him. Can you get through service without cracking up? He wondered. But guess what? Brian took the challenge, and let's just say he didn't exactly ace it. The giggles got the best of him. What's he laughing at? <laughs> this is serious. Classic, huh? After the service wrapped up, Ramsey wasn't holding back. He gave everyone an earful, and why wouldn't he? The kitchen was in total disarray. He wasn't shy about pointing out to Sharita that while she had taken up most of the kitchen responsibilities, it wasn't right to sideline the head chef. And a question arose. If she was already managing everything, why even have a chef on board and spend money on their salary? And let's not forget Brian. Ramsey didn't mince his words while telling him this. Two hours pure concentration mm -hmm. without laughing. Okay. Yeah, don't think that we were going to get through an episode without any Ramsey action. This episode may be sweet, but not that sweet. The next day rolled around, and Ramsey made his entrance only to find an empty shack. 
And guess what's worse? I know it's chilled, but fucking hell, not as chilled as a snack. Why is no one here this time in the morning? Fresh deliveries were just sitting outside, and no one was around to take care of them. But wait, here comes Brian strolling in fashionably late. However, Ramsey had enough, and he laid down the law to Sharita. What'd you do to him when he's late? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. If she wanted to make profits, she needed to start taking charge and set some rules for her staff. Sometime later, back in the kitchen, Sharita was in full-on batch cooking mode, getting a whole week's worth of mac and cheese squared away. And what was the plan, you ask? To freeze it all and reheat it as needed. Despite that, this is what Ramsey thought about it. Hot from the stove, her food is irresistible. People will travel miles to taste it. I like that. Yeah? Yeah, very nice. Wow. Can't believe how she never failed to impress Ramsey with her food, even if it was destined to go in the freezer. Now, Ramsey had quite a bit to share about this situation with Brian. Well, he sure did empathize with the guy, because it's pretty obvious that he had been sidelined. The problem here was Sharita being too hands-on. She had her hands in everything, from cooking to prepping, leaving Brian in a bit of a limbo. And let's be real, according to Ramsey, that's a recipe for any chef to lose their mojo. After all, who'd be motivated when they're not even doing the job they're supposed to? Ramsey then got down to business, kicking things off with a plan to overhaul the restaurant. And what was his top priority? To be out with the frozen stuff and in with fresh, made-from-scratch meals. And oh boy, the price tag on those dishes, a bit steep at 14 to 15 pounds a pop especially with the portion sizes. Most folks would just opt for a main course, but Sharita had something to share. Bank manager, <laughs> yeah. Um, accounting, and I was saying, help me, help me, how do I do this? They say, you're gonna, you're gonna raise prices. Like, seriously? So basically, it was the bank manager and the accountant who were pushing her to hike those prices. This kind of channeled Ramsey's brain to get to work, and he figured out a way to nudge customers into having a full-blown three-course meal. Is to have a starter, yeah. a mains and a dessert. Okay. You wait and see the turnover. Well, it was a simple trick to adjust the portion sizes and make the experience more appealing. As well, he decided to do something exciting. The whole team headed to the beach for a cookout bonanza. Sharita was like a natural sales superstar, charming folks left and right and scoring bookings for the restaurant. All cooked fresh at Mama Cherry Soul Food Shack just around the corner there. And this is where the plot thickens. I'm gonna ask you to stay out of the kitchen. Okay. You've yeah. got so much to sell. Yeah. And you, you're a f***ing cook. Ramsey put Sharita in the role of host for the evening and got her out of the kitchen. And guess what? Their little beach stunt paid off big time. Have you had a chance to look at yes. the menu? Yeah. yeah. With bookings rolling in and buzz building, their evening service was fully booked. And remember, they could house 40 people at a time. Looks like they were turning things around, with that beach cookout being the straw that broke the camel's back. Or, uh, healed it? I don't know, help me out here, you guys. Later, when the evening service kicked off, it was a one-man show in the kitchen as Brian struggled to keep up with the fresh cooking routine. Brian, move up. Two hours in, and the food's not going out quick enough. Sharita's constant interruptions didn't make things any easier. I need to see what's on it. You got, you got hot, right, hot wings and barbecue chicken wings. I've got the hot wings. I need whatever else is there. However, Ramsey noticed potential in Brian, and he just needed a spark to rekindle his passion. The following day, Ramsey rolled up his sleeves and teamed up with Brian in his own kitchen for some unpaid prep work. And how was Brian's first crack at making a meatloaf, you ask? Well, let's just say it didn't go so well. But together, they whipped up an improved version in no time flat that was already worthy of making it onto the menu. Sometime later, Ramsey sat Sharita down with a business cake. Clever, right? To lay out the restaurant's problems. That's when Sharita came clean that she was only paying herself 200 pounds a week, even less than her part-timer. 200 pounds a week? A week, yeah. You're working seven days a week? I'm working seven days a week, That's yeah. a f***ing disgrace. I admire it, honestly, but she deserved way more with all the work she was putting in. But why fear when Ramsey is here? His brain was in overdrive, and with it, he introduced a new concept, soul in a bowl. It was a sharing platter priced at 10 pounds per person, with a clever aim to upsell on wine. And did you see the look on his face? It looks like Ramsey was enjoying helping the restaurant out of its distress. Mix it. Oh, mix it. <laughs> How can I mix it doing that? 
<laughs> At this point, I think he knew things were gonna be okay for Mama Sherry. But he had way more ideas in store, including a midweek three-course menu to drum up sales and fill up the place, along with hitting the streets to promote the restaurant. I'm doing ribs, jambalaya, barbecue chicken, oh, going yeah. Brownies. Yeah. Bring, bring some friends with you, okay? You love the food. And what was the result? Good morning, Mama Cherry. Can I help you? But whilst we've been out, bookings for this evening's launch okay. have gone through the roof. Early. Bingo! They were fully booked for their relaunch night and even needed two sittings to accommodate all the customers. And when relaunch night arrived, Sharita was not messing around. She laid down some new rules, making sure every single member of staff knew what was expected of them. The next one is there is always something to do. If you can't think of it, ask me. And the most important rule, be on time and gear up to work when the restaurant opens its doors. Brian was feeling the heat at first, but they managed to pull it together, and the first sitting went off without a hitch. The relaunch turned out to be a winner. Customers left with smiles, and Sharita was on cloud nine after raking in over 1,000 pounds from both food and drink sales. After that very successful relaunch, before saying his goodbyes, Ramsey sat down for a heart-to-heart -heart with Brian to dish out some man-to-man -man wisdom. But last night, it came back, and I could feel it. You are the head chef. chef, yes. Looks like they had come a long way from reheated dishes and tardy staff, and things were finally looking up. A viewer commented that this rescue was the real deal. No major drama, just a chill restaurant making improvements and achieving great success. Talk about soul in an episode. And two months down the road, Ramsey made a return visit. Oh my god! <laughs> my cousin! <laughs> Here in the dining room. And what did he find? The team has been stripped down, and the customers seem to love their new improved food. Hell yeah! Business was on the upswing, and food was zipping out of the kitchen faster than ever. They made a bold choice to shut their doors on Mondays, but hey, the rest of the week, they were fully booked. Now, fast forward a whole year. Ramsey was back, and Mama Sherry's had gotten herself a swanky new address. Mama Sherry's Big House. Me. Mama Sherry's big house. How about the reservations? Packed solid for months in advance. Mama's soul food joint has certainly gone up in the world. Look at the sign of that. Numbers don't lie. The joint was pulling off a whopping 1,000 covers weekly. They even beefed up their team with nine chefs just to keep up with the demand. But in a bit of a sad twist, when Ramsey took a peek in the freezer, guess what he found? Where's our standards gone? Where's the passion gone? Not the best sight, to be honest. Tray after tray of frozen, prepped food. A complete 180 from the strides they'd made at the shack. It was like their passion had been put on ice. And guess what? The customers could tell. A bit disappointed, to be honest. I cut it with all the reputation Mama Cherry's got. I just thought it was all very bland and very small portions. The disappointment was clear, with the food not living up to expectations. And some even vowed to never come back. And if that wasn't enough, Ramsey was pretty miffed too. I arrived, I didn't even want to eat. Mm -hmm. Don't take that personally, take it as brutal fucking honesty. Yep. He admitted that he wouldn't even consider dining there after seeing the state of the kitchen. But instead, he stuck around to lend a hand. Along with Sharita and the kitchen crew, they set about reviving the soul in a bowl concept, aiming to bring back that spark. And don't forget Brian. He had this brand new addition to the menu, lamb cutlets with beetroot salsa. And what did Ramsey think about it? Well, check it out. In terms of the beetroot mm -hmm. and the onion, delicious. High praises, my man. Dude thought it was downright delicious. But Sharita's proficiency extended way beyond the kitchen. In 2007, Sharita made a splash by releasing her cookbook titled Mama Sherry's Soul in a Bowl Cookbook. Around the same time, head chef Brian left his kitchen duties to concentrate on art projects. However, in July 2007, a food hygiene inspection painted a rather dismal picture, as the restaurant scored a lowly zero stars. Sadly, by 2009, Mama Sherry's couldn't keep afloat, succumbing to heavy debts and going into administration. Sharita didn't give up, though. She launched Mama Sherry's Speakeasy in Brighton, but its doors shut within a mere two months. However, Sharita's culinary journey didn't stop there. She made her presence felt on various television cooking shows, becoming something of a celebrity chef. Following in Ramsey's footsteps, I guess, she also hopped onto the YouTube scene, sharing recipes and more on her channel. 
Are you ready? We are going to be making a strawberry and tomato bruschetta. <laughs> did you really forget? Yes, I did. <laughs> In 2015, a restaurant named Carib Soul opened in Croydon, serving up Mama Sherry's recipes with glowing reviews on TripAdvisor. Unfortunately, Carib Soul's run came to a close in 2017. Fast forward many years, and guess who's back with a bang? Brighton's jolliest chef, none other than Sharita Jones. She made waves with her rekindled passion and a fresh start. Mama Sherry wasn't ready to hang up her apron just yet. Fast forward to April 2023, and there it was, a triumphant return. Mama Sherry's Soul Food Shack made a grand reappearance in Brighton, but with a twist. It was a short-lived affair running only from April 1st to April 26th. This time, instead of a full-blown restaurant, Mama Sherry opted for a one-month pop-up. But here's the heartwarming part. The pop-up wasn't just about food or even raking in the dough. It was about giving back. She used the opportunity to raise funds for Macmillan and the Star Trust, making a positive impact while dishing out her soulful delights. Now that's cooking with heart. Beyond the one-month pop-up restaurant in Brighton, she's kept the spirit alive with various other short-term pop-ups. It's clear that her love for sharing her delicious creations with the world just couldn't be contained. As for Brian Moyo, he wasn't far behind in the restaurant game. He and his brother Aaron launched the Soul Food Food Bar in none other than Brighton, earning excellent reviews on TripAdvisor. But they pivoted in 2018, closing the restaurant and focusing on a takeout burger joint named Bad Boys. Phew, with all the ups and downs and everything they're up to today, they've got my head spinning. But do you have any more juicy updates on these folks? If I've glossed over any interesting tidbits, drop them in the comments below. But hold on, there's more. Join me on my channel's Discord server, where we can dive deeper into some actually wholesome Kitchen Nightmares experiences. And for those of you craving something extra special, I've got an exclusive server just for you. Before you head out, if you loved the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell to turn on post notifications. Trust me, it really helps out. And if you thought this video was wild, oh boy, you gotta check out this post right over here. Trust me, it's even crazier.